Hello and welcome to another alternative build video. Today we are taking a look at this set, 75338 Ambush on Ferrex. This is of course the first and currently only set come off of the Andor show, which just started last week. And yeah, I really enjoyed the show, so I wanted to make something out of it. So this is the set I'm going to be breaking down today. You can see here we've got two main builds, that being this like mini gunship type thing, and then this little speeder. What I will be making out of the two, you'll have to wait and see. But I'm pretty excited to get going, so let me break these two down for you, and show you all my pieces, and then we can get started. And here's the set, all broken down into its parts. You can see we've got our three figures there, and then split into Technic pieces, random miscolored pieces, some pieces are sorted by colour, like these ones down here, where other pieces like this are sorted by type. Let's see what we can do with this then, shall we? Hopefully what you'll see next will be a fantastic build worthy of you clicking on this video. Let's hope for that. I'll see you on the other side. was called Ambush on Ferrex. Um, and the name for this alternative build, I'm guessing is probably gonna be also Ambush on Ferrex because it's the same thing, it's from the same episode. Um, but yeah, here it is. Hopefully, I think I got the idea across of what it's meant to be quite strongly and I'm actually quite happy with how it turned out. I think the most difficult part here that I had to work with was maybe the color palette. I think when you look at it in the episode, those walls are definitely like dark tan masonry brick. So if I had a lot of that, that'd be wonderful. Um, thank, I'm so happy that the speeder was included in this set because it had so many dark, it didn't, uh, it didn't have a lot, but it had enough dark tan pieces to get a good amount of dark tan into the mock. Same with the good amount of dark orange in the interior of the actual like ship. So those were the two colours I mixed in with the dark and light bluish grey to give it some actual texture. Like you can see, it had a couple of studs, which I've just put everywhere. Um, but yeah, let's get into the details of this. It stands at a base plate of 26 by 13 studs. Don't know how many studs up it goes because all of the walls are basically snot. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm really happy with how this is how this has looked. So let me break it down for you. Start from left to right, shall we? In from the left, you can see we've got Luthen. Um, I may struggle a little bit with some of the names just because the show is literally a couple of days old but at the time of me filming this, so I might not know everything perfectly just yet. So he's hi hiding behind this barrel here. It just has a bit of cover shooting at the um, officer? <laughs> question mark, question mark. But yeah, you can see he's shooting him at, down at him there. The floor is made up of just a bunch of different tiles and plates of different colours, just to give it as much texture as possible. These big plates were very helpful just to help me fill out the floor to give it a good amount of room 
so it doesn't seem too cramped but also not that i'm wasting any space either you can see all over the mock i've got random little bits of debris um this was basically just because in the episode there's a bunch of just different weights or turbines or whatever i don't know if they were turbines i ended up building a lot of turbines that's just because of the pieces i had I also have a couple more of just bits of random debris, which I could scatter around, but it did look a little bit messy with those on. So if you want to make this alternative build, these can also be made if you want to throw them in there as well. Looking, um, I've been able to use one of the bits that I'm most proud of doing is being able to give this mock some form of roof. Obviously, when I show you the leftover pieces later, there was nowhere near enough to finish a roof. So what I did was I took the Technic beams in the set, or some of them, and basically put them out at an angle here using a couple of studs just so they wouldn't keep falling down with the weight of the bits hanging off them. And then used a couple of angle plates. If you notice, they do get slightly larger as they go back. So I'm quite happy with some forced perspective I used there to make them generally look the same size, even though they actually get much bigger as they go back to much smaller here. It kind of works as forced perspective, kind of doesn't, but I'm actually quite happy with how that looks overall. And you can see a, down each of them are a couple of different bits of things. You know Star Wars, there's always bits of different crates or things hanging around, all hanging off the edge there. There was also a lot of chains in the actual episode. This set does not contain any chains, but it does contain two black whip pieces. So I've used those to kind of simulate that. Going further down, you can see there's a bit more debris back there and different little engines and whatnot. Then we get to the Casio keyboard himself, Casio Nandor. Um, he's sitting behind his box. This box is from the episode. I want to say it's like a Star Path Navigator. It had a fancy name in the show. I just used a couple more control panel pieces to make sure, sure that looked correct. I know it's probably a lot bigger than it was in the show, but I just wanted to represent it somehow in here. So he's about to try and grab that before a bit of debris is about to smash on top of it and break it all up. And then moving on, I've just got another box of these trans green studs. No idea what they are, but they can just be something that's just hanging around. Had to fill up this little space a little bit. We've got one more big engine back here. I know there was like a pillar here in the show. This is kind of here to represent that, this like big tanker or something. And then behind that, we've got um, Karn. Of course, in this idea of the mock, it's not actually Karn. Like the face is quite a generic one, so you can't really tell. And also it doesn't have the sergeant's hat, it's just got a regular hat. So it actually fits probably better than if I were to do Karn there. So that's looking pretty good to me. You can see as an accent color for the whole room, I've used this bright light orange. That's mainly because that's what was used on the actual vehicle. But I actually quite like it, how it like fits around here. You can see like on the sides of the, this wall where I wouldn't be doing much else. I've incorporated a little bit of that. Also that way through these vents up here, if you can just about see the same color, the stickers on top of the door are those to kind of represent some kind of logo where I've just got some more mechanical stickers in the doors themselves. And then a couple of studs just lining up just to give this left side of the room a bit more of that color. A bit more detail into the back wall. You can see I've created three equally sized windows here using a couple of wedge plates. There's no glass included in the set besides that windscreen, so they are just blank open. But I don't think that's too noticeable. And then around the sides of each, you can see I've got this same technique with the shield pieces and then a couple of modified tiles just to smooth them out. I'm really happy with how that's overall come across. If you look into the actual episode, you may remember that um, this wall probably wasn't actually there. It was all blown out by uh, thermal detonators or grenades or whatever. Um, I could have done that, but I wanted to make it just look a little bit more interesting. So I used quite a lot of the sticker pieces included in the set in this little section here. You can see that I've got a control um, panel going on on the right there. And then these two doors, which actually, if I lay my camera down there slightly, it's actually probably a better view of it for you. Um, these doors actually should be able to open if I just give it a little bit of a push there and there. There you go. Those doors swing open so you can have your different members of the Primor Corps run through. 
and those should also shut together. They are built, if I show you the way the sausage is made, essentially, I'll bring you around to the back side of the mock, which is um lovely and definitely all in the right color. You can see this is built just using a couple bits of Technic. You can see I've got lift arms running around and those just basically swing through like that, all tiled on the back here when the walls don't fall off. They just swing back and forth like so. The back of the main side looks wonderful and definitely um, this is by far the much more camera friendlier side. You can see everything is built for support and stability. You can see that's going down as a, for a bit of an interesting technique there with jumper plates and half snot pieces just to make sure that wall stays straight. And just like a lovely two by two plate there, which doesn't take it <laughs> take you out at all. But yeah, it helps support these main beams. So I'm really happy with how that looks. You can actually see on this left side, I built it slightly too far out to the left. Um, but I was able to manage that just by putting this wedge plate in here, which kind of smooths it back down. So actually, while this is a stud too long on the top, it does it does just about fit in, I think, overall. And it's you don't notice it too much when looking at it at the main angle. But yeah, that's all I really have to say about this one. You can pretty much see it all together in this one shot, everything that's going on. I, I was able, I'm happy with the one action feature I could add with those sliding doors. And I guess you've got a couple more action features if you want to just like knock this down and then you've got debris dropping or whatever. That's not really an action feature. That's just breaking apart the mock. But you know, it swings and roundabouts. Anyway, that's the mock. And this is what I've got all together left over. It looks like a lot. I think I'd say overall it's about 150 parts left over. A lot of that is these Technique pins, so that kind of bulks out a little bit. And also those green studs. That's about 10, but you know. Um, yeah, so these are all what I've got left over. It looks like quite a lot. Not really too much. I think I, I pretty much used every part I could in the actual build itself. And I probably could build something else out of this. Maybe like another little vehicle using that windscreen, but just to like stay a bit closer to the actual episode, I just built the main thing out of that. But I'm pretty proud of it overall. But there you go. There is my alternative build on set 75338 Ambush on Ferrex. The alternative build is called Ambush on Ferrex. I'm very creative, as I said. But there we go. That's the mark. If you liked it, like the video, that's what the like button's there for. Comment if you think I've done a good job of recreating this scene out of the set. Should I just do a game where each new episode of Andor I try and rebuild the same set into something from the episode? That would probably get very tired very quickly. So I won't do that, but I'll just show you off this one. And subscribe if you're new to see more alternative builds like this and other different LEGO Star Wars mocks. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. And good bye.